Everyone loves talking about Raptor engines, thrust numbers, or booster reusability. But the loudest, most violent moment in a Starship launch isn't the liftoff. It's the split-second pressure spike that happens before the rocket moves an inch. The acoustic energy under the pad at full power is so high that without a dedicated suppression system, Starship could crush its own plumbing, destroy avionics, and rip tiles off the ship. That's why SpaceX built one of the most aggressive water deluge systems ever created. Let's start with a moment that caught the world's attention, booster ignition. When 33 Raptor engines start their ignition sequence, they don't just create fire, they create pressure waves that can exceed 180 to 190 decibels at the source. For context, 160 decibels can rupture lungs, 180 decibels can destroy reinforced concrete, and Starship produces this while standing on a steel plate only a few meters below its engines. Unlike NASA's SLS pad or shuttle-era flame trench designs, Starship doesn't have a deep canal guiding exhaust away. Instead, SpaceX designed a thick, multi-layered steel plate with high-flow water ports that shoot water directly upward into the engine plume. But before even talking about water, here's the real danger. Acoustic shockwaves don't just travel through air, they couple into the rocket structure. They travel through steel, aluminum-lithium alloys, thermal tiles, plumbing, avionics racks, everything. The bottom skirt of the booster, where avionics boxes are mounted, is especially vulnerable. The methane feed lines and oxygen pre-burner lines experience dynamic pressure spikes during startup. A poorly suppressed acoustic environment can cause valve chatter, micro vibrations that damage fittings, and harmonic instabilities in the engines themselves. Raptors operate at chamber pressures around 300 bar, that's over 4,000 psi, and they are incredibly sensitive to vibration harmonics. So if you don't suppress acoustic energy at the pad, you're not just risking the rocket, you're risking the engines. When SpaceX launched Starship for the first time in April 2023 without a deluge system, the concrete under the pad shattered into millions of pieces. Chunks of Fondog concrete weighing tens of pounds were thrown hundreds of meters away. The crater under the pad was massive, nearly 25 feet across and several feet deep. After that, Elon confirmed they needed a better solution. Enter the steel showerhead plate. This massive steel structure is several inches thick, supported by huge beams, and water flows through internal channels at extreme rates. FAA filings confirm that for a full deluge event, Starbase can release more than 350,000 gallons of water in under a minute, with peak flow rates exceeding 350,000 gallons per minute during the first few seconds of ignition. The system is so intense that it turns Texas humidity into a temporary cloud bank. Now imagine this, water traveling through the internal channels of the steel plate at pressures high enough to turn the entire structure into a giant cooling block. Water bursts through hundreds of ports drilled into the plate, spraying upward at high velocity. The goal is simple, disrupt the Raptor exhaust flow, absorb acoustic energy, and prevent reflected shock waves from striking the booster's underside. Think of it like trying to throw a baseball into a tornado. The ball loses energy before it can do any damage. Pad 2, the newest Starship launch pad, takes this even further. Unlike Pad 1, which was retrofitted after the concrete destruction event, Pad 2 was designed from the ground up with deluge in mind. According to environmental documents, Pad 2 can use over 422,000 gallons of water in a single event, and its pump system is capable of bringing the deluge up to full pressure almost instantly. Where Pad 1 primarily used the steel plate, Pad 2 adds a full trench-like geometry under the pad. Not quite a flame trench, but a reinforced flame bucket that directs exhaust into a shaped cavity lined with additional water injection points. It's like combining shuttle-era thinking with SpaceX's steel plate solution. Here's where the story gets interesting. Raptor engines have been improving rapidly. Early Raptors produced around 230 tons of thrust. Newer Raptor 3 variants push past 280 to 300 plus tons reliably, and Elon has hinted they will approach 350 tons. That means total booster thrust may climb from around 7,500 tons to over 9,000 tons in the near future. 
More thrust means more exhaust energy. More exhaust energy means more acoustic power. More acoustic power means the DELU system has to evolve constantly. This is exactly why Pad 1 is being rebuilt right now. SpaceX crews have been removing older berms, ripping out outdated piping, expanding reinforced zones, and installing new high-volume water-handling conduits. If you watch recent aerial footage, you'll notice large-diameter pipes being laid across new graded trenches, new pump housings being constructed, and a noticeable increase in electrical conduit density, all indicators of a more advanced, sensor-driven water system. And here's the thing. Raptor ignition is not a gentle ramp-up. Unlike engines like the RS-25 that throttle up smoothly, Raptors have a much steeper startup curve. They hit high chamber pressures rapidly, creating sharp acoustic spikes in the first 0.2 seconds of ignition. This is where the deluge earns its paycheck. The system must already be at full flow before the first engine reaches stable combustion. If the water is late by even half a second, the acoustic load can double. That's why the pumps for Pad 2 were upgraded specifically for faster spin-up. Let's talk physics for a moment because understanding how water kills sound will make you appreciate the system even more. When a sound wave enters a dense water droplet cloud, energy is absorbed as the droplets compress and then scatter. A pressure wave traveling through steam loses energy rapidly, because steam has much lower density and higher compressibility compared to hot exhaust gas. And when water turns into steam, its volume expands by about 1700 times. That's not a small number. It means the deluge system doesn't just throw water at the exhaust, it creates a dynamic steam barrier that absorbs and diffuses shockwaves. The hotter the raptors get, the more steam is generated, and the more acoustic energy is absorbed. SpaceX is literally using thermodynamics to fight sound. The steel plate itself is an engineering masterpiece. At full throttle, raptor exhaust temperatures can exceed 3500 degrees Fahrenheit. The steel plate without water cooling would deform or melt, but with water blasting through its internal channels, its temperature is kept manageable. Sensors embedded in the plate send real-time temperature and pressure readings back to controllers, who adjust flow rates dynamically. It's an active system, not a passive one. Pad 2 takes this even further with additional manifolds and what appear to be redundant loops, likely added to support rapid turnaround testing where multiple static fires or back-to-back -back launches might be required. Now let's get into the story element, the moment of ignition. Picture it. T minus 5 seconds. The pad is quiet except for the hum of pumps building pressure. The booster vents methane and oxygen boil off, spraying white clouds into the humid Texas air. At T-3 seconds, the deluge ramps up. Water floods the steel plate and the flame bucket. By T-1, the entire underside of the rocket is hidden behind a spraying wall of water. Then, ignition. The first engines roar to life, sending shockwaves downward. Steam explodes upward. The entire pad disappears behind a cloud thicker than a fog bank rolling in from the gulf. And through that chaos, the booster rises. Without the deluge, this would be impossible. The acoustic load would shake avionics to death, crack thermal tiles, and hit the inner bulkheads with pressure pulses strong enough to cause structural stress. But because the water catches the sound, breaks it, softens it, and absorbs it, Starship survives the birth scream of its own engines. Let's add more numbers for perspective. The super heavy booster stands around 232 feet tall. The thrust at liftoff is roughly 16 to 18 million pounds of force, depending on the configuration. That's equivalent to the weight of more than 4,500 pickup trucks stacked on top of each other. The acoustic energy produced scales with thrust, so Starship is several times louder than the Saturn V ever was. NASA's Apollo program used over 300,000 gallons of water during launches. SpaceX has now surpassed that. And unlike NASA's open bucket system, SpaceX sends water directly into the plume, which is far more efficient. The evolution of this system tells a bigger story. SpaceX is building infrastructure not just for one launch a month, but for a future where Starship launches weekly, even daily during Mars campaign seasons. Rapid reuse needs rapid pad recovery.
That means a reusable water system, faster pump cycles, smarter temperature management, and a plate that can survive dozens of launches with minimal refurbishment. But here's the cliffhanger. What happens when Raptors get even more powerful? What happens when SpaceX introduces stretched tanks, bigger payload doors, or heavier lunar configurations? The acoustic load will rise, and the deluge will need to adapt again. There are clues that SpaceX is already preparing for this. New piping at Pad 2 suggests a second-stage manifold system that hasn't been used yet. The trench shape under Pad 2 hints at a hybrid water and deflector approach that might combine the best of flame trenches and steel plates. And some recently observed structures around the sump tanks suggest SpaceX may be testing water cooling techniques used in industrial metallurgy, potentially allowing even faster turnaround. If SpaceX eventually attempts its rumored Super Heavy V2 booster variant or moves toward the 40 engine configurations hinted at years ago, the W system may evolve into something closer to a double-layered water curtain or a vortex injection system that spins water into the plume in a spiral pattern. That's speculation, but speculation grounded in engineering and the patterns we're already seeing. So while everyone watches the rocket going up, the real magic the survival of a machine generating nearly 9,000 tons of thrust happens right under our feet, in the steel, in the water, in that chaotic dance of fire, steam, and pressure. Starship doesn't just escape Earth because it's powerful. It escapes because the pad protects it. And that brings us to the final payoff. Starship is not just a rocket. It is a system. Rocket, engines, tower, clamp arms, tanks, and yes, the water deluge. Together, these systems are what will eventually take us to Mars. Without acoustic suppression, rapid reuse would fail. Without rapid reuse, Mars becomes a dream instead of a mission. So if you enjoyed this deep dive and you want more grounded, technical, narrative-driven aerospace content, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Rocketry, and follow us on Facebook, where we post daily SpaceX updates, behind-the-scenes looks at Starbase, and breakdowns of every major test in flight. Thanks for watching, and get ready, because Starship's next chapter is just beginning.